Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Whether by accident or design, this government has presided over the disenfranchisement of hundreds of thousands yep. of our neighbours and friends who wanted to vote in that election but were unable to do so. And frankly, the Minister's complacency uh, here today is simply compounding the problem. The Minister acts as if this was some sort of surprise. Back in 2014, many people told the Cabinet Office that the system then was inadequate. The Electoral here, Commission here. itself here, here. called for a review of the UC1 system. So, given the additional dubiety and uncertainty created by this government about the fact that these elections would take place this year, surely it must have been obvious that something needed to be done in order to improve the situation. So, at any stage, did ministers approach the European authorities to get a dispensation from the regulations in order to cope with the situation in the United Kingdom? And at any stage did ministers consider bringing forward a statutory instrument to this House in order to truncate the existing system for filling in the UC1 forms? And will the minister promise that there will be a full and public investigation into this debacle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I think in being clear, the Council Directive is a piece of EU law. It is not something that you can seek derogations or exemptions from. And I know normally the benches of the Scottish National Party are very keen to see European law fully complied with and there. And this is about an election across all 28 member states for one parliament. This is not about a uniquely British election. In terms of looking at options to come forward, I must say we did briefly ask for official advice, but where would it be possible to consider a statutory instrument? Again, this rubs up against our need to implement the exact expression that state about sufficiently in advance of polling day. And given our registration deadline is the 7th, is the 7th of May, roughly two weeks before, it's hard to see how we could move much more beyond that date. And in terms, finally, of how we will look at this, the Electoral Commission will comply with its statutory duty to conduct a review of how the elections were conducted. And that is, for me, a, a body that is firm in full <coughs> solid election knowledge, has a, is appointed independently, and is not under the control of government. I think we can all think of the views of the Electoral Commission have expressed that are either ones we loved or loathed. And that, I think, is the best option. We will therefore carefully consider what conclusions they bring back.